Hi everyone, you're with Tesla Tom and welcome to my YouTube channel where I talk about all things Tesla, electric vehicles and renewable energy. If this is your first time to the channel, hello and welcome. Please take a moment to hit that red subscribe button and that way you stay informed of any new content and it also helps my channel to grow. Today I'm going to show you how you can optimize the way you charge your Tesla for your next road trip to maximize charging speed as well as reduce charging time and we're going to do that and much more right after this. So you may have seen some of my Tesla road trip planning videos using a betterroutplanner.com. If you haven't done so yet, I will leave a link up here as well as in the description below for you to check out. So if you've ever used a betterroutplanner.com, you will realize very quickly that it likes to plan the route such that your car arrives at the next charging destination with a low as possible state of charge within the confines of what you set. For example, if you set a reserve of 5% for your Tesla, a betterroutplanner.com will plan it such that you arrive at that next charging stop with about 5% charge to maximize charging speed. So in this example here, I've set our Tesla Model 3 with a reserve of 5% and a maximum charge of 9% between Tweed Head in the north of our state of New South Wales all the way to Albury to the New South Wales Victoria border. And you'll notice that of the five recommended charging stops along this route, three of them actually ask your car to arrive at that stop at 5%, which made me ask the question, is the optimum charging speed actually at the car's lower state of charge rather than at the top? And is it as low as 5%? And to put that theory to the test, I used Sydney's fastest electric vehicle charger, which is ChargeFox's 350 kilowatt ultra rapid charger in Zetlands in the south of Sydney using our Tesla Model 3 performance. But before we started that experiment, I actually had to get our car to 5%, which actually is a harder thing to do than you'd imagine if you don't drive as much currently. So before the experiment, we went out for a drive around the city. I actually put the aircon on as well when I went home, as well as the seat heaters to warm the cabin up and the battery up, hoping to get as fast a charging speed as possible with the 350 kilowatt charger. So here we are entering the East Village Shopping Centre in Zetlands, where the Charge Fox Ultra Rapid Charger is located in the basement car park. And by the way, there is two hours free parking as well. So here's a nice time-lapse video of the charging session. Let's have a look at it and then we'll analyze it after this. Okay, so initially you'll note that the numbers do climb very quickly in the low range and it tends to peak at around the 23 to 24% mark and on this occasion I reached 190 kilowatts, just 2 kilowatts shy of my personal best 192 kilowatts which I clocked in December last year. That was during our summer. Perhaps the heat helped with the battery's ability to charge a little bit faster. Okay, so with the data I had I plotted out a few graphs. You'll notice that the top two graphs are very similar. The first one is time versus state of charge, and the second one is time versus charge added. And the bottom two are time versus charging speed, and state of charge in percent versus charging speed. 
The top two graphs look like a fairly linear distribution before it tails off towards the end of the charging session. Well, the bottom two, it looks like there is a peak at around the 300 minute mark, and then it decays off fairly rapidly towards the end of the session. Let's concentrate on the first two graphs to start with. If I draw a straight line from the beginning of the charging session, this red line tends to follow up to about 40% state of charge before the graph itself tails off towards the end of the session. With the data set I had, I found that the car reached 25% state of charge at about five and a half minutes. It reached 50% at about 12 and a half minutes, which is about seven minutes later. And then it reached 75% state of charge at about 23 minutes, which is about 11 minutes later from 50%. It took almost another five minutes to reach that final 5% at 80 to 81% charge. So as you can see from my data and my graphs, it took a longer time to get from 50 to 80% charge than it did from 5 to 50%. So going back to a Better Route Planner's recommendation for my road trip between the Tweed Heads and Albury in New South Wales, as I said, it likes to recommend the car reach 5% before charging again. And you'll see that for four out of the five charging stops, the maximum it recommends the car reach is only 60%. And in fact, for two of them, it's 51%. And that tends to correlate with my data and my graphs, showing that the car's charging speed is actually at its optimum between that 5 to 50-60% of charge. Because as you can see from this graph, after about 50-60% to 60 state of charge, the graph tends to tail off very quickly in terms of charging speed as well as charge added to the vehicle. And for those of you interested, here is my ChargeFox receipt for the session. I consumed 56.41 kilowatt hours at a rate of 40 cents per kilowatt hour. We charged for 28 minutes on the 9th of July 2020, for which I paid $22.56. And the Model 3's efficiency is about 6 kilometers per kilowatt hour, which means that for a consumption of 56 kilowatt hours, I added about 340 kilometers to our car's range. And just from a rough calculation, if I were to add that much range to a petrol or a diesel car, I would probably be paying two to three times that amount at current petrol prices for an equivalent priced car. And looking at the state of charge versus charging speed, as the car reaches about 25% state of charge, the graph does decay quite rapidly as well. When the car reaches at about 60%, you'll notice that the charging speed dramatically reduces after this point. So guys, in summary, it looks like a betterrouteplanner.com is very good in its advice in asking you to keep your car in a lower state of charge for road trips. That way you get the maximum charging speed, which of course reduces your charging time as well. If you are in a bit of a hurry, you need to get from point A to point B relatively quickly, then this is probably the best way to do it. Of course, if you're on vacation and time is not really of the essence, then it doesn't really matter too much. But if you want to keep your charging time to about 15 minutes each time, then I certainly would recommend you arrive at each charger at about 5 to 10% each time and then top up to about 50 to 60%. That way you only have to charge about 15 minutes each time, which gets you very close to how long it would take to fill up a petrol car, taking into account paying for the petrol as well. For 15 minutes worth of charging, that really is plenty of time to go to the bathroom, possibly get a bite to eat or a drink as well. And by that time, if you follow a betterrouteplanner.com's recommendations, then you'll be well on your way to the next uh, supercharger or another type of charger along your journey. All right, guys, well, thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned as much as I did from this video and from my experiment. I'll certainly be using this strategy from now on if I'm on a road trip and I need to stick to a schedule, knowing that I can get a faster charging rate at the lower end of my car's state of charge. And finally, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, how do you charge your Tesla on a road trip? Do you follow a betterrouteplanner.com's recommendation and charge to 50-60% when they ask? Or do you like to charge to 80% or even 100% just to be safe? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe. And until next time, happy charging.